Hi, everybody, and welcome to the ION Media Networks. Coming up next on ION San Francisco, we're going to be talking about water quality issues and water supply issues. Is there an answer out there? Yeah, there might be. We'll find out in just a minute, so stick around. Hi, everybody. I'm Locke Roberts, your show host for Eye on San Francisco. Thanks for joining us today. And we're going to be talking about the need for replenishing and supplying and giving us more water. This is a growing state. It's a crazy growing state. And Heather Cooley, who is a research associate with the Pacific Institute, that's the think tank over in Oakland, is here today. And she's going to be talking about the uh, I guess it's somewhat of a controversial method at bringing in more water supplies, and um, you're going to give us both sides of it, I guess, and hope, hopefully uh, we can determine after the show whether or not it's a good thing. Right. Thanks for coming in today. Thank you for having me. It's nice to be here. It's, it's always good to have people from good organizations, and um, we know that, uh, yeah, you guys are a think tank, mm -hmm. and um, it's good to have that, especially in light of all the craziness that's going on in our society today, whether you're talking like the federal government mm -hmm. or, uh, you know, we just, we're loaded with all types of issues, whether it's political or environmental. So, but hey, before we get to the hardcore stuff, um, I'd like to find out a little bit about you. Uh, you're a okay. native of the uh, of the Bay Area? I am. Um, I grew up in, uh, in Antioch, which is in the East Bay, mm -hmm. um, and didn't, didn't fall far from the tree, I guess. <laughs> Stayed in, uh, went to UC Berkeley for undergraduate and graduate, um, and have stayed and worked in the Bay Area most of that time. Cool, yeah. Have you always been environmentally uh, minded? Um, yeah, to some degree. I think over the years I, I realized the importance of really integrating uh, economic and social elements to try to really craft solutions that, that would work and that would benefit kind of everyone. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It seems like uh, our country's not real good. And when I talk, well, even from like the uh, leadership standpoint, um, and I'm not suggesting like from any particular party or whatever, mm -hmm, but mm -hmm. uh, in general sense, over the years, it seems like we haven't been that mindful about the environment and connecting uh, what you know long-term effects could happen from certain practices and all. Mm -hmm. uh, think, is that think that's fair? I do think that's fair, although um, I'm hopeful that that is changing. I think mm. in the past there was this understanding or thought, belief that we couldn't, that the environment um, and was a very large place and we couldn't harm it as much as, as we're realizing that we can and we have done. Mm -hmm. um, I am hopeful, though, that there are solutions um, out there and that, and that we're really moving, going to start moving in the right direction. And then you think about some of the cities like uh, Phoenix and Vegas mm -hmm. and uh, even Denver. Um, it seems like more times than not, they're dealing with water problems, mm -hmm, lack of water mm -hmm. and all. And um, how, how does California, how does Northern California stand in that standpoint? Um, how is our groundwater supply and, and the surface water supply here? We do have an abundant groundwater and surface water supply, although we do have an insatiable thirst for that <laughs> supply. Um, and, and our research at the Institute, Institute has shown that we have um, that we're very inefficient with our use and there's tremendous potential to increase the efficiency of our water use. Mm. Um, and We recently completed a, a report uh, last year in 2005 in which we projected where we could be in the year 2030 if we mm. used our resources efficiently. Um, we found that we can reduce our water use below current levels even with population growth and a vibrant economy. Wow, because that time period would allow um, if the growth projections are correct, mm -hmm. um, you know, quite a, an additional um, load on the, uh, um, you know, the, the inhabitants of the yes, state. Yes, definitely. And including this part of the state. And that's amazing that, mm -hmm. the, uh, that the requirements would actually be less than they are now. Well, we, we wow. still, um, while we have done a fair amount of conservation since, since 1980 or so, we still have a huge amount we can do, particularly um, in conserving our outdoor water use. You know, a mm -hmm. lot of water is just wasted, running down gutters. Mm -hmm. um, and and we, can, we can in turn use that and, and, and use it for the benefit of, of the state. Mm -hmm. most, of the, uh, most of the water supply for um, the coastal area and all, um, it's coming from further east, back in the high country. Is that mm -hmm. the, or the origin? Yes, in, mm -hmm. uh, in the Sierras primarily, mm -hmm. although there are some communities do have some local groundwater supplies, mm -hmm. but uh, the Sierra and the Sierra snowpack provide most of the water. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's interesting. On this show, we, we get all types of people, and we had somebody from the National Weather Service, the mm -hmm. San Francisco office um, recently, 
and we were talking about um, you know the consequences of global warming, mm -hmm. which I thought was kind of interesting too because he's a, he's an official employee of the government, and I mm -hmm. asked him, I said, well, you know, what's obviously the you know the administration right now that's in place, um, um, you know, ha hasn't said that global warming is hasn't jumped on board, mm -hmm. so to speak, and uh, so I was interested in, in what his take was and what his take from the government was, mm -hmm. and basically that scientists are basically on the same boat at this point that it is happening mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. uh, man does have certainly you know, influences with this so um, I thought that was interesting but we were talking about the snowpack and he was saying that likely that the snowpack will be um, more brief mm -hmm. in, in its lasting during the winter and a very quick melt off right so that could influence the water supply I guess um, definitely um, there will probably be less snowpack and then there will be a change in the timing of snowpack mm -hmm. um, that, that will present an issue, although, um, you know, traditionally, and, and I think some people are believing that we should just simply build and raise our dams, build new dams to, to yep. trap more water. Um, we think that there's still tremendous amount of potential in changing how our dams and reservoirs are operated mm -hmm. to try to make up for some of the changes associated with climate change. Mm -hmm. um, there's still a, a huge amount of work that needs to be done on this. Mm -hmm. And I think um, California is starting to move in that, in that direction, and that's, that's very much a, a positive development, I think, in the past couple of years. Mm -hmm. Probably end up being a national leader, um, you know, Hopefully. in that, so the rest of the country will jump on board. Tell me a little bit about some of, like thinking out of the box now. Um, you know, the idea of using uh, uh, salt water mm -hmm. um, for our basic water needs. Uh, obviously, uh, <laughs> the Pacific's right there. Right. Huge source of water. Um, the basic uh, stumbling block, though, is that it's loaded with salt. Right, and right. And I remember when I was a kid, they were talking about, um, you know, this was t some technology that was used, I think, in Saudi Arabia or uh, over in the Middle East uh, somewhere. and. Um, and they always talked about, well, it may happen here. Mm -hmm. We're on the brink of possibly having this, aren't we? That's correct. Um, there are a few plants, in Cal a handful of seawater desalination plants in California, mm -hmm. um, the largest being in Santa Barbara, although that uh, plant was built in the early 90s and has never really been used. <laughs> um, they found that, that conservation and connection to the state uh, water supply was sufficient to meet their needs. Mm -hmm. So, so that plant has been sitting idle for 10 to 14 years. Wow. Um, there is a community in Marina that has a small plant. Um, in addition, Catalina Island has a small plant that is used intermittently. So it is here to some degree. Um, right now, there's a proposal to build um, 20, 20 plants or so along the California coast. Mm -hmm. um, most of these would be concentrated in the Monterey area, um, Central California region and also in the LA, San Diego area. Mm -hmm. um, and these, these plants are incredibly large. They're larger than any that have been built um, in California thus far and also in the United States. Hmm. Um, some of these um, may be expanded and if they are expanded as planned, they will be among the largest in the world. Wow. So we're talking about a, a massive increase, a 70 to 80 fold increase in the amount of seawater desalination. Holy cow. Um, in California, so. Any, anywhere in the country that it's being used at this point for the? Um, there is, well, there was recently a plant built in Tampa Bay, although there have been some problems with that plant. A plant's five or six years um, behind schedule. Hmm. They're still trying to, to work that out. Mm -hmm. um, there are, you know, examples of some, some smaller Small plants, mm -hmm. um, but nothing of the scale that, that is being proposed. Mm -hmm. um, although there are plants in the Middle East, some very large plants in the Middle East, um, primarily. Uh, mm -hmm. and also in Spain, and they're talking about building some in Australia. Mm -hmm. So th there are some functional large plants, mm -hmm. although th currently none in the U.S.